All right, party people, it is your boy BQ. Welcome back to the most negative channel on the planet. This is your 2024 TNA Rebellion preview. I am your boy BQ. I wanted to do this preview yesterday. That was my intention. Um, I went to the TNA press conference, first of all, during the day. I wasn't initially planning on it. I never... I never envisioned myself part as the the part of the fake wrestling mark media, but um, <laughs> you know I said you know what, let's do it, let's do it. Um, so I made the trip, only 15 minutes from the house, but the traffic was god awful. Oh my lord! Um, and it probably took me about 45 minutes to get there. It, it was pretty bad. So I got there right when it freaking started. Um, but it was a fun experience. I actually enjoyed being there quite a bit. I, you know, earlier in the day, earlier in the day, decided I'm gonna go check it out. So I messaged Ross. I said, "Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come through." Um, and I got there, and he he made sure I got a seat, and even let um, my two kids sit with me. I was bringing all four of my kids, but uh, the two younger ones decided they didn't want to go. So thank God, because I don't think they would have really liked being there. But um, my other two liked it quite a bit. It was just it was just a fun little experience to be a part of i had a question uh, that someone took very early on and i wasn't like super prepared i didn't have a list with me so i kind of had a out of my ass at the end i knew ross was going to come back to me because he he tried to give me the mic at one point um without even having to raise my hand for it <laughs> he was gonna let me hey you want to go next i was like no no this guy took my question and uh i had to sit there for a bit until i came up with something so if you guys caught it if you watched it you uh very potentially uh saw me on there but i wanted to do this review last night i just kind of ran into a um, bit of emergency i had to take my ex to the emergency room well I actually had to call 911 for her. i was trying to take her to the er but couldn't get her into the car um just had a bit of a medical emergency um is she if you guys have been following me from the very very beginning not to get too personal uh, she was my my girlfriend girlfriend at the time uh, when I started the the channel. I referred to her as my wife, but she was really my fiance. Um, I just hate the word fiance. I I got used to it with my current wife, you know. But um, <laughs> I used to hate that word, so I just tell people oh, it's my it's my wife. Um, all the relationship all ultimately didn't work out. Uh, we're just much better off as friends. But she's <clears throat> excuse me, she's my best friend to this day. And she's actually the one who raised my boys. So, you know, I, for those of you who know, like I was a single dad for a while. Um, well, actually, I wasn't a single. I, I became a single dad when I, when I around the time I met her. Let me put it like that. But after we split up, I was a single dad for years, um, which was pretty rough. But um, she is the one that raised my boys. So that's the one they call mom. Like they don't know their actual mom. So. Um, She's the one they call mom. So I, I hold her in a very high regard and we've lived, you know, everyone gets along her and my wife and we've, uh, you know, the, me and the ex were in Florida. To Even though my boys always live with me. Uh, it was, I've just never done it without her in the picture. So I, I moved her out here, but, um, there were some medical issues and we had to address that last night. Um, and then I wanted to do that, do it this morning, but I made the mistake of buying my wife a new iPhone. And when I set my alarm for extremely early in the morning, she also woke up and wanted to fuck with the phone, um, was setting it up <laughs> so that monopolized all of my time. I couldn't podcast this morning either. So there's my there's my private life there for you for a little bit. I usually don't get into too much of that stuff, but um, there's that. So now um, I'm knocking this rebellion review out. It's a little bit late on you know as far as tonight goes because I had a function at my kid's school that I just learned about today. My youngest son just learned about it today, uh, <laughs> so I was there the last few hours. So now I'm home. It is a nine thirty five my time here in Las Vegas, and uh, we're gonna get into this. We're gonna talk about this rebellion card. Um, first things first, people have been asking about the individual who fell at the press conference. 
they want to know <laughs> what happened. So this guy was only about two seats next to me. But he was sitting, he, so he wasn't sitting flush on the chair. He was sitting between the two. And he wasn't media or anything. I'm, I'm fairly certain. He did not look. I'm just going to say he wasn't. I'm, I'm fairly confident in saying that. Uh, but he was sitting with us. And he was sitting between two chairs. So, like, you know, just envision, if you will, like the crack, little crack of space. That's There's that and then the two chairs surrounding it. Well, that's how he was sitting. And somehow he slipped through the, the crack there and fell between the chairs. And I don't know how because we were we were in there pretty tight. So I, I just don't – I can't envision in my head exactly how he slipped and what what happened. I wasn't sure. I didn't even hear him fall, to be honest with you. But Nick Nemeth was answering a question. And he's like, does he need help? You know, he just said it. So whatever he said, it was very kind of nonchalant. I look over and this dude is just sitting on the ground and um, the people around him couldn't really, we didn't have a lot of room. It was, it was pretty tight in there. So he had a female next to him and a dude and they were like trying to get him up and they couldn't. Um, and then I think that's when I started cutting out the feed and then he ultimately got up and then he just sat in the chair like nothing was wrong. But, he, but the dude is bleeding like John Moxley. Um, Everyone was saying he was bleeding from the neck, and maybe that's what it was. I could have sworn it was about from the, the temple area because I feel like it was down his face. I could be wrong. It, I was actually, because <laughs> I'm because I'm a dick, I was actually trying to take a picture without being noticed, uh, but I just couldn't get a good angle. But I didn't want to come off like too much of an ass, but <laughs> just just out of a little humor, I was I was trying to take a picture. But um, yeah, he, he just sat up bloody and just went back to his chair like he was going to continue the the press conference and Josh Matthews was like hey we need to we need to get him out of here like Ross get him out of here like it, it almost was like bothering Josh Matthews like almost pissing him off that basically that the dude took for you know just fell to begin with uh completely ruining what was going on and then uh they couldn't get him out of there so eventually they were able to kind of part the red sea and remove a bunch of chairs and get him get him taken out. And I think they had like a little first aid kit. I think Ross brought like a first aid kit over or something, but it, it was just one of the weirdest things I had ever experienced. I mean, dude just slips through the cracks of two chairs, hits the ground is, is bleeding like John Moxley. And, um, and then just gets back up and tries to continue. And <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know if I'm, I, I probably shouldn't laugh. Um, I, I shouldn't, but it was just one of the oddest things I've ever, ever been around. I swear, people were messaging me, making sure it wasn't me who fell. No, that that, that wasn't you, was it? BQ was not me. Was not me. That wouldn't have been too graceful. Um, but yeah, I, I did get a chance to ask, ask a question, you know, and I ended up just asking Moose. Um, I knew what the end. <laughs> I knew I had to ask like a kayfabe question but I tried to put him on the spot a little bit and said, Hey, Nick Nemeth said that he's, he doesn't want help. You know, that he's going to do it alone. Are you willing to do it alone? Or, you know, without the system. And he just said, you'll have to tune in to see. I, we know that the system's going to get involved, right? I just wanted to, I was honest to God, just kind of testing to see how he was going to answer it. Cause Moose is pretty poised. He does. He does pretty good with this. Shit. I was curious. I was just, how's he going to attack this question? Um, but my original question was actually going to be if he feels that Nick Nemeth earned the title shot. I mean, I was going to get into it more than that, but that's the general basis of what I was going to ask him. Someone did ask the question, but they asked Nick Nemeth directly asking, you know, do you feel that you earned this title shot or whatever it was he said, you know, he kind of brought up, you haven't been here long, only won a couple matches. And Nick answered the question very well, uh, saying, I didn't ask for this. I said, I was willing to, you know, to um, work my way up, a moose attacked me, and this and this and this. You know, so, but it was it was a fun experience. We um we stayed for dinner after at Mabel's barbecue, and man, 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 man. Now this place is expensive, uh, but if you're one of the people going to Rebellion and you don't want to eat at the food court, and you're just like, yo, let me let me try Mabel's. You know, um, absolutely delicious. Expensive. Um, I think I spent 120 for me and my kids, you know, 
but uh, very, very good. Um, I got like a crispy pork sandwich, a barbecue sandwich, and man. Um, so yeah, I got to put Mabel's barbecue over. It was good stuff, but um, but yeah, great little setup. It was just right in the back of the restaurant. It wasn't wasn't a shit show. I was I was kind of picturing that it would be, but but no, it was it was it was cool and it was um, it was just awesome. It was uh, we'd never been that close to Moose before. He's one of the the wrestlers we just haven't had the opportunity to meet in in our travels, and um, we came close. We were eating, and Moose actually walked past us, and I just gave him the Moose arm signal, and he uh. I guess they were going to a VIP area to eat, but I gave him the arm signal and he pat me on the back. said, what's up? And said hello to the kids. So cool little moment, cool little moment. Uh, hopefully that wasn't too long of an opening for you. I can't believe I went 11 minutes on all that, but we're going to get into this rebellion review right now. One time for your mind. Uh, excuse me. I had it, I had it pulled up here and I pulling up the wrong page. So, we got three countdown matches. Uh, I, I will say I'm not overly jazzed about this countdown show. They've been doing a lot better with these. You know, for the most part of recent shows, they've been like pay-per-view quality matches. They've been they've been really good. Uh, these ones aren't, you know, these don't tickle my dick. Like this is not, um, this doesn't do a lot for me. But I'm open to the I'm open to being entertained. You know, there's one match that does look very good. Well, it isn't my style, but I think the majority of you will like it. And it's, you know, ABC and Leon Slater versus the Rascals. It's weird that they're billing it the Rascals and Myron Reed when he's really part of the group. And does that mean he's not going to be around? I don't, you know, kind of interesting. I don't know. I want him to stay. This guy, this fool needs to stick around. I want him to be a part of the Rascals Act, uh, especially since he's dating Killer Kelly now. You know, maybe it's in his best interest to just stick around with with uh, TNA. We're gonna get a chance to see Leon Slater again. I, I forgot to say this when I was reviewing Impact, and it was the uh, opening X Division match show that Jake something won. Leon Slater and was it Kevin Knight in the match? They're almost built exactly the same. They looked they looked so similar in the match. And I remember thinking, I wish they didn't have them both in this match. Because it was like a kind of a little hard for Leon Slater to stand out. But he's bigger than I thought. You look at the pictures and you you're thinking he's some little tiny X Division dude, you know, but he he's a bigger dude. Uh, but he's really talented. The the TNA fan base seems to be very excited in what he can he can do. Um, so we'll, we'll see how this how this goes. Is there going to be shenanigans with the ABC? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't really know. Uh, I, I do think the Rascals will win this match, though. I'm I'm pretty confident in saying that. The next two matches, I'm uh, so the TNA Digital Media Championship, the most prestigious uh, mid card title in all of wrestling, is being defended by Crazy Steve versus Laredo Kid. They had a match once before. I didn't think it was there. Were, there was a lot to write home about. It was okay, uh, but they gave Laredo Kid his first opportunity to speak in like eight years, and uh, that tells me he's gonna win. There's a lot of time that TNA puts together matches, and I'm saying, yo, I would love some something to sink our teeth into, some kind of little video packages, some kind of something, right? I, I, I say that all the time. A lot of you guys echo that you know you say the same thing so he does a sit down and the sit down was so random and out of left field it's it's not common practice that tna actually does give us that little extra for the matches you know we're we're always we're it's more it's more likely that we're going to ask for video packages and promos than what they actually give it then it's okay trying to wear this it's more likely that we're asking for him than they they give them to us if that makes any sense at all. So my point is, I don't think they would have done this. I don't think they did this just to hype the match. I think they did it because Laredo kid's going to be the fucking champion and they, he, they don't want him to look like a jobber. That's, that's really what I think it is. And there's speculation that crazy Steve might be gone. 
He's not on the card for under siege. She's taking bookings that weekend. And we know that TNA books every title every month, even though I beg him not to. I mean, who am I? I'm just a podcaster. But I'm just saying uh, it's it. The, all arrows point towards Laredo Kid winning this thing, which this title, what a fucking mess. We have come a very long way from Jordan Grace and Matt Cardona to like now probably Laredo Kid. This title, I swear. Um, and then the Knockouts World Tag Team Champions, Spitfire are taking on Decay. I really couldn't care less about this match. I have been pretty open that Spitfire is not my favorite team in the world. Um, Decay has is like a nine-time tag team champ tag team champion. I'm exaggerating, of course. They're the ultimate placeholder champions. They're this. They just get the titles when someone's leaving. I don't think Decay's winning. Uh, they got this dude from Rancid singing him down like they're not losing. They should, but they're not. They should. They shouldn't have won won the titles to begin with, but they did. Uh, and we know that Masha's looking for a partner. It could be Alicia. Alicia could be. I'm predicting Alicia will have another partner. Um, I, I'm predicting Masha will have a partner, but uh, there's going to be some kind of swerve where where Alicia and a mystery partner get into the match. I'm I'm pretty confident in that. Um, I say that a lot, and I'm wrong. I shouldn't say I'm confident in it. I but I, I feel that direct they could go that direction it would actually be a great camille spot uh to come in do all the work and then Alicia get the pin i could i could enjoy a title reign like that but uh this match this particular match uh, i don't know i'm not i'm not real into it but let's get into the main card here joe hendry's going to take on rich swan my prediction for this is that um i think that Rich Swan, I shouldn't say Rich Swan, but I think that first class very likely could be debuting a new member here in one way, shape, or form because there's something that's odd about Joe Hendry versus Rich Swan one on one. It's it's just odd. Um, I mean, they got ABC on the card, but they're on the undercard, and it's 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 very random. You would think that the match was ABC and Joe Hendry versus. Rich Swan, um, AJ Francis, and or something. I don't know. They, they, you would just think this is a fucking tag team match. Is my point. And it's not. It's just very random that it's Joe Hendry versus Rich Swan. Something we've already seen before because they don't typically do rematches. Even though they've got a couple on here, they don't typically do rematches on pay per views. That's more for TV. So I just think that there's some something's going to happen here. I have been predicting that I don't think Rich, excuse me, AJ Francis is going to be the main uh, part of the main wrestling talent of this group. I think he will ultimately serve more as a manager. So I really think someone's getting, um, it's, I don't think something big is going to happen here. It's the first fucking match of the show, most likely. I think it'll be the opener or damn near close to it. So usually when that happens, you're not getting some kind of big reveal. Uh, but. I can see some kind of partner here. I don't know. It might not be here, but there's just something fishy about this one-on-one match. Uh, Rich Swan will win this. I'm pretty confident in that. Full Metal Mayhem, Eric Young versus Frankie Kazarian. As much as I hate garbage matches, I do enjoy Full Metal Mayhem for whatever reason. And um, I always tell you guys, I love guys who can freaking work, and that's what we have here. It has been... You know, for what it was, for what it's been, it's been a good feud. Uh, but they're neither of them are, are are rarely on TV. None of them are really winning and racking up, you know, wrestling and ra- racking up wins. It's not a lot of promos. I don't think Rich. I don't think Eric Young was around for these tapings. I think there's some rumblings that he's going to head back to WWE and be a, pr- a producer or something. Um, I don't know. I. I, I was pretty confident Eric Young was going to win their first match, the uh, number one contenders match. And people was like, no, because Frankie just turned. I was pretty sure Eric w- was going to win. Uh, Frankie's going to get his win back here. I'm This I'm confident in. This I'm very confident in. He's going to get his win back here. And it's going to be one of the better matches on the show, even being a garbage match. TNA, 
World Tag Team Champions, the System versus Speedball Mountain. I have a bad feeling that Speedball Mountain is winning. Because on the episodes of Impact, Moose destroyed Trent Seven. Eddie Edwards beat Speedball Mike Bailey. Are these guys going to go 0-3 versus the System? The thing with Speedball Mountain is that they've lost more than they've won by far. They may not, it may not seem that way, but they have. They really didn't deserve the title shot. But I think, man, I think we're getting a spitfire here, a fucking random ass uh, world title win. This is probably against the grain a little bit. I'm going to say Speedball Mountain wins this thing. I have them winning the championship. I think they could lose them very quickly because I think system best works if everyone's a champion. Something something tells me Speedball Mountain's winning this thing. That's just wrestling logic. They didn't go 50-50 when they wrestled each other in singles singles matches. Are they going to make them look like that big of goofs that they, they lose here? It's not an outcome I want. I really have no interest in this team, but I think they're going to win. TNA X Division champion Mustafa, must, Jesus Christ, that name, Mustafa Ali. Versus Jake something. A lot of people are saying that this could be a match of the night. I think it'll be up there. I don't think it will be, though. Uh, but it'll be up there. And Ali will definitely win this thing. Jake has let us know that he's winning the X Division Championship this year. So I know I keep ma- I keep saying this phrase, but I'm, I'm confident in saying that Ali is going to win here. And they're going to do... Finish my story angle with Jake something, and Jake will be the ultimate person to beat Ali. I think Ali's run is going to be a lot like Trinity's, that he ain't losing until he's done. He's not losing. He's not losing like an episode of Impact or Impact Plus. They put the title on this dude in his very first match. So I think he's going to hold the title pretty much forever, and Jake ultimately will win the belt. Uh, before the year is up i mean they've telegraphed that that's going to happen someone doesn't make a claim like that without doing it that's just wrestling last man standing match josh alexander versus hammerstone this is going to be nuts this is going to be one of the the matches people were talking about this is going to be straight up fire um i i got hammerstone winning this thing I think Hammerstone needs to win this, and I think he needs it to win without with with minimum shenanigans, because Josh Alexander can be heated up at any time. His gimmick is best wrestler in the world, wrestling best wrestlers in the world, and having wrestling matches. And and you easily could build this dude back up if it comes down to it. I think when heels lose, you can cut him off at the knees a lot more. I said on my last podcast when I was reviewing impact that you can get a heels, I think gimmick over a lot easier than a baby face or getting their character over, but as a credible threat, I think it's a lot harder with a heel with heels. I think heels um, should appear unbeatable. I think every time you beat a top heel, you knock them down a couple notches. The baby face, I don't really think that. Like, if Josh lost this match, say Josh lost, do you think that hurts him as much as if Hammerstone loses? Like, I don't think Hammerstone can lose here. If you're trying to build Hammerstone as the champion of tomorrow, that dude who's going to be world champion at the end of the year or the beginning of next year, I I, I think you got to start building him now. I don't think him going down two to one versus Josh Alexander is the way to do it. So um, I'm going with Hammerstone winning this thing. I think he he can have a you're you're stopping his momentum if he loses, and you're not going to be able to get the mo- momentum back quite the same. So I, I really think he's going to win. Knockouts World Championship Jordan Grace versus Steph Double D Lander. I've gone so back and forth on this because, honest to God, I can see Steph DeLander winning because Jordan has no opponents. 
Nash by Elegance is not ready. They might get her ready for Slammiversary. But man, I just, I don't think Jordan can be the champion that long. I think they're going to um, hot shot it. I think they're going to find a way for, for Steph DeLander to win. And Jordan Grace could win it back at the tapings. That's where I'm going with it. I think these these um these predictions of me of, of mine are a little wild today. I'm making a lot of rule mark predictions um, of storylines and things that I think are going to happen and, and really <coughs> excuse me likely won't. But um, I got to get some of these right, right? Got to get some correct. I've got Steph Delander winning this thing, uh, but also losing the title very soon. I stated on my impact review, I wouldn't be against this being a death match. I think that actually would have been the way to go because Jordan has been the part of so many firsts. It was even part of the fucking story of the contract signing. There's a time and a place for death match wrestling. And I think this is it. I think um, it would have had people talking. I'm going to go with Steph Delander winning them. I'm probably wrong on all these. I probably suck. And I kick out. Then main event, TNA World Champion Moose versus Nick Nemeth. To me, this is going to be the match of the night. I trust in Moose's ability to deliver in big matches, to deliver at pay-per-views. Excuse me for the yawn. Um, I trust Nick Nemeth's ability to to deliver in the main event. So I think they're going to absolutely kill it here. A lot of people got Nick Nemeth winning, uh, thinking that the champion or that the company needs the belt on him because ratings are not amazing. But it, the buzz is uh, cold. There, there's not a, there's not a lot of chatter. The Rebellion is their D level pay per view. Double D, we can get sexy with it, but it is their last priority out of the four. It is. There's no way you can fucking flip that, spin that, turn it around. It is the least of their priorities with all the pay-per-views. I think it's going to be a good card. I mean, a good match. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I mean, a good, just an overall card. I think the overall show will be good, but this is some D-level shit. Um I don't see that as the platform for Nick Nemeth to, 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 to win the title. I think it's going to be the least watched pay-per-view of the year. And, uh, you know, a lot of people speculate he could get the, the, the title to get a little buzz going, to heat things up. Again, you if he loses here, he can bounce back. Moose loses here, he can't. I'm going to go with Moose winning this thing. Because I just don't see a scenario stripping the title from him that quickly. I think there's going to be two title changes that um, and th- that includes um, Steph Delander winning and uh, Speedball Mountain winning. Even though there's a low probability those that's what happens, I've got them both winning and uh, losing the titles very very quickly again. That's that is I- I'm sticking by it. It's probably wrong. But I'm sticking by it. So if you are still on the fence about Rebellion, I would definitely order the show because it's it's so rare they put on a bad pay-per-view. It's so rare. So I would pull the trigger. I would do it. I would give it a shot. This is not their best work. This, <coughs> excuse me. This is not their best card. This hasn't been their best push, best promotional push. The best built show. It is the D show. It is the double D show. All right. But it should still be very good. There still should be people talking. And they're they're teasing some people. They're 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 definitely um they're definitely making some teases. So we should see some debuts at the show. People are saying saying Santana, people are saying Ali. I will say my conversation with Ali, I am not. And I don't think she was bullshitting me. I'm not under the impression she's been in talks with TNA. I could be very well wrong on that. I was really not under the impression that that was a thing. So I'm not going to go with Allie. I think Santana is a safe bet. 
Couldn't tell you any other female that it could potentially be outside of Camille. That would make sense. And I'm not overly optimistic that it's her coming or that she's coming to the company, but she, she might be, I'm just, I'm not overly optimistic about it. Um, but yeah, that's your rebellion preview folks. Again, I would definitely check it out. If you could, I would definitely order it, uh, support TNA. And boy, I'm tired folks. Well, wow. Ooh. Um, and let's hope they put on a good show. Sorry for the cough. Sorry for the yawns been working a lot lately sleeping very little so thanks for rolling with me on that that's going to do it for me guys i will not be reviewing the episode of impact because it's so close to rebellion uh, but i'll get my rebellion review in very quickly i'm your boy bq and i am freaking out peace